Hey, this is Cole Cabana, and you are listening to the Angry Marks Podcast. You are an angry mark, and you are listening to a podcast. Asylum Championship Wrestling's been around since, honestly, it's been around since like 2001, but we did our first show after failed attempts <laughs> for about a year um, of just, I mean, here's the story behind ACW. We started in Lawton, Oklahoma. Um, I owned a, a nightclub, or actually I was the manager of a nightclub called the Asylum Concert Club. Uh, the actual owner said, hey, Brandon, why don't you go ahead and fill Monday nights for me? And I'm like, I don't want to fill Monday nights. That's when, uh, you know, Monday Night Raw is on. And that was, uh, you know, exciting time in wrestling. And I'm not missing Raw for work. <laughs> so I came up with the brilliant idea that we would illegally show Raw at the uh, Asylum Concert Club. And uh, in between, I don't know, commercials and stuff, we just get a makeshift ring with some uh, mattresses and, and wood and tie some ropes around the beams and basically disgrace the business that, uh, you know, 12 years later we're uh, <laughs> uh, hopefully uh, putting over. That never happened. I mean, we were just going to get, like, our sound guy, me, some of the security guards, beat the crap out of each other during commercial breaks and after Raw do some goofy stuff and give away some prizes, whatever. What happened was I bumped into a toothless uh, guy named Jeff Parker. I actually think I named him Jeffrey Parker, but uh, I don't know what his real name was. Uh, he actually had his beat up piece of cr- – can, can I say bad words on this or is this like a – yeah, we're totally uncensored. We have a, a mature rating on iTunes, so feel free to cuss. Oh, oh, you got the big M in a box. Fantastic. Okay, well, it was this big piece of shit outside. Um, the, the ropes had ropes. Does that make any sense? There was, like, things dangling off of them. It was rusted out. All the wood was warped to the point where both ends were pointed upwards. There was some rotted carpet padding on top of it. And I looked at the thing, and I said, Yes. <laughs> I was excited, uh, probably more than I've ever been, because honestly, outside of going to wrestling shows, that was the first time I've ever actually seen a wrestling ring. So no matter what condition it was in, I was pretty excited. So somehow I talked Jeff into saying, hey, ah, can I have this? And he, he kind of said, yeah, I think. And, you know, and either way, we took it. Um, we fixed it up as good as we could. Instead of the rotted carpet padding, we had two layers of nice half-inch carpet padding. Um, we retaped the ropes, did all kinds of stuff. And next thing you know, we had an actual wrestling ring. So uh, it was a little bit different than uh, just throwing some mattresses on the ground with wood on top of whatever the stupid thing we were going to do before. Uh, we fixed up the ring. We trained in it for about a year. And we kept bumping into all these local wrestlers. Uh, the, the magnificent Ty Magnus is one of them, real name Todd French. He's the guy that kind of taught me how to bump and taught all those security guards who we were going to joke around with, taught them how to bump. Next thing you know... Uh, guys from Oklahoma City are coming down. Hey, they got a ring. They're training. All oh, cool. We got free ring time. Uh, Seven came down. Jeff Tiger came down. Big John O'Malley came down. Uh, then we started meeting local guys like Johnny Z, uh, his brother J- uh, J- Jeff Wolfenbarger, and uh, some giant black guy named Kool Aid. Uh, people just kept filtering in. Next thing you know, we had this huge roster of people that didn't know a damn thing about wrestling, but we cared and we had passion for wrestling. So it was, um, it was it was a misfit group to say the very least. I mean, if a promotion came out now and was any even ten times as good as we were back then, I'd probably go look at these little punters. You know, these guys suck. Whatever. You know, you guys are never going to make it if you're doing that kind of stuff. But and people did that. I mean, Oklahoma City, all the promotions there, they tried to they tried to get us to. <laughs> To, to, to hang it up before we even got started. But we didn't. We succeeded. We kept doing shows every Monday night uh, during the commercials for Raw, after Raw. And then uh, to the point where the fans said, uh, hey, we don't want to watch Raw anymore. We want to watch you guys. So we moved the show to every Tuesday night. And um, that's kind of what we did. And then we moved out of the asylum in Lawton, moved down to Wichita Falls, had a great time down there, kind of r- ran our own little version of a TVMA show down there. And uh, any. any <laughs> Anything went down there, bad language, nudity. We had storylines like which was worse, the Holocaust or slavery. Um, <laughs> it was just a horrible time, but a great time at the same time. And ever since then, I mean, we spent a lot of time in Wichita Falls, Texas, had a good golden era down there. And in 2006, we moved out to Colorado Springs, and we've been kicking ass ever since. 
That's a fantastic story, Brandon. And uh, yeah, I have to like, say, it's yeah, it's it's classic case of if you build it, they will come because you put out a ring, and sure enough, people started showing up. But I have to ask a side tangent on something you mentioned during that story, and you said that you were showing raw illegally in the club, and I, I have to wonder about that because I've been in a lot of bars and a lot of clubs that have had a TV on with wrestling on, and, and why would it be illegal to show? Oh, uh, we advertise. Oh, okay. We so advertise. it was. It was more the fact that you were like selling the fact that Raw was on, and that was Pretty the legal part. I that was see. the selling point for people to come, and we wanted to add something to that, so we put a bunch of jabronis in the ring and did a makeshift wrestling show, which actually turned into a wrestling show. All the best from Oklahoma City, several from Texas, they all became a part of the ACW roster, and Asylum Championship Wrestling was born at the Asylum Concert Club. And like I said, 10 years later in August is going to be our 10th anniversary from our first show, and... Uh, it blows my mind that it's been 10 years. Um, I, I feel it. <laughs> I feel every bit of it. Yeah, well, when you've been taking bumps and everybody you've been working for has been taking bumps and you've been up and down the road and putting together the ring and doing shows, I'm sure you do feel those 10 years. But you, you know, got to be up- playing. Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. I was going to say putting up that damn ring and the entrance and everything and uh, all that wears you out 10 times as bad as actually doing the shows and taking a few bumps and uh you know, I'm almost 40 years old at this point. Uh, it, it just wears you down after a while. But I'm not complaining. It's still paying dues. I'm, I'm still paying dues. I mean, I'm nobody in the grand scheme of things. I have a nice little slice of the pie, and I love it. And I think ACW has proved itself over the last 10 years as one of the best promotions anywhere. And um, we're going to be bringing that hopefully here to GFL.TV pretty soon, and the rest of the world can check it out. Absolutely. We'll look forward to checking it out on Go Fight Live. And uh, for that debut on GFL, I'm sure you're going to do something big to commemorate the 10th anniversary. Anything you can uh, let us in on in advance? Any big plans? Well, we're not going to be live, you know, every Saturday like some shows are. I don't want to live that life, (laughs) to be honest with you. I don't want to be that stressed out. Um, I mean, I do most of the editing and stuff myself and it's whatever. I like to t- take my time and do whatever. We're actually just going to release a pilot here pretty soon. It was actually from a show in February. Uh, it was a good show. Uh, we're actually waiting to open up our own venue here in Colorado Springs and our own uh, brand new training center and everything before we actually start filming our, you know, our weekly show and everything. Plus we'll have a lot of satellite shows as well. Um, I mean, to be honest with you, the, the, this show right here, I just want to see, I just want to do the process one time with GFL.TV. I love what they do with other promotions and um, I'm a part of some of the other promotions that are on GFL.TV, and I, I, I have a ton of people watching it. Even my mom watches it up in Michigan. So it's a, it's a, great, it's a great product GFL.TV has. I just want to give it a shot, try it out, let them see us, and uh, see how it goes from there. Once we get our full production and our building and everything done, uh, down pat and we have a, you know, a better-looking show, Um, Because I'm not a fan of running shows in places with basketball hoops. It makes me sick to my stomach after everything I've done for 10 10 years. I mean, the place that we filmed it was one of those places because Colorado Springs, kind of slim pickings a little bit. So uh, as far as venues and everything. So once we get our own place and we've got several places that we're looking at and and hopefully locking down, it's always something. This place doesn't have a bathroom. This place doesn't have water. This place doesn't have uh, the correct zoning or whatever. Uh, It's a big flaming pain in the ass. So, uh, but I think we're getting close and uh, you guys will see it as soon as it comes out. 